You literally just recorded the fantasy video. Why are you already recording again? Because by the time this video comes out, I'll be back in Indiana walking my little sister down the aisle. So I need to get this shit done ASAP. And don't you bring up the weird timeline paradox thing. I'm writing this script before my competition and I still still don't know how this shit is working. Okay, okay, I won't bring it up. What will you discuss this time? My first army, the Death Watch. I found out that the book series that I thought was a single novel is actually 12. So I'm gonna have to wiki this shit in order to talk about your faction and all its aspects. So the Death Watch is essentially the Imperium's version of ICE. They protect the border, escort those who come with peaceful intent to the proper locations to discuss intent and reason. In fact, that brings up something interesting that is no longer in use by the Imperial Palace. The Emperor built the Imperial Palace with a secret room meant to allow alien races into the building to discuss alliances and trade options. The Emperor really didn't hate Xeno species. In fact, there's evidence that he actually learned to fight from some Eldar Phoenix warriors. Though, that was an observation from someone in the Horus Heresy novels. I don't exactly remember who, though. Horus also wanted to make alliances with aliens, too, even before getting Chaos crammed. The whole situation that caused the heresy was actually him trying to make friends with some things. It was a human empire that worked with some random ass aliens, suggests some Eldars too, but who knows. But with the 10,000 years being without the Emperor, the okayness with aliens has turned into vitriolic hate. To be completely fair, if every interaction with aliens is usually met with fire, I can understand the default hatred. The Eldar, for example, took advantage of the Age of Strife, which nearly wiped them out, to destroy humans' worlds they once called allies. Some of the Eldar actually remember this and act confused as to why humans attacked Eldar on sight. But what started the Death Watch? Well, Orcs. Orcs caused the Death Watch to be formed. I mentioned a 12 book series. The War of the Beast is what I know it as, though the official name is The Beast Arises. It starts with the book I Am Slaughter by Dan Abnett. This book follows the Imperial Fists mostly, coming across a massive orc wall that seems to be a lot more organized than they've ever seen or heard of. This series has a massive Death Star in it, which works just like that. It teleports across the galaxy, seemingly using not the warp technology, but instead more closely to Homer technology from the Terminators. Fun thing is, the Adeptus Mechanicus actually managed to get their hands on one. A single one. There were multiple. They got their hands on one of these killer worlds, and they got really confused by it. They understood that it worked. They knew how it worked, but they couldn't figure out how it worked that well. It should not have been near as powerful as it actually was. Essentially, the entirety of the Imperium had to work together Every single legion and chapter had to work together in order to defeat the Super Wall. The most notable workers were the Salamanders, the Space Wolves, and the Imperial Fists. Very often, these chapters would end up in kill teams working together with one another. These teams were usually set up for specific jobs, such as striking orc camps or removing Eldar war vessels. In fact, the game Kill Team is actually based off these. One of the Kill Teams in the game is Kill Team Cassius, which is also available to the Death Watch army, but we'll talk on Kill Teams a bit more in a bit. Primarchs were involved in the War of the Beast. At least one was Vulcan. 
Vulcan has had some weird story moments. For example, he died once, light blast and all, came back, crazy, died again, didn't blast, came back, sane. Vulcan is an odd guy that could have easily become a monster in this story, but instead became everybody's dad. During the War of the Beast, Vulcan personally came across and fought and killed the titular beast. Multiple times. Six times, in fact. Vulcan somehow died multiple times in this world, but that isn't all that surprising given he's a perpetual. Being a perpetual means that one can regenerate from a single atom. Not a cell, a single atom. Which, weirdly enough, could also make him impossible to kill for a Necron given their weapons disassemble molecules, don't destroy atoms. Vulcan took out six beasts because somehow there were multiple at once. This has never been explained in the nearly 10 years since Rise of the Beast came out. Seriously, the first book came out in 2015. This event led to Vulcan just fucking off and telling his sons that he'd come back when they could find his nine toys? Hold on, let me check. Yeah, nine artifacts of Vulcan, spelled with an E instead of an I for some reason. I don't know why that was a stipulation, but it's still canon, and there's four artifacts found, at least two of which are held by Vulcan Histan, his successor. But with the end of the War of the Beast, the Inquisition started realizing the weakness of their space borders. They went to each and every chapter and said, Hey, can we steal some of your space marines, preferably veterans? We don't want to retrain them. Most chapters were not cool with it, until the chapter master of the Imperial Fist said, Okay, yeah, this is actually a good idea, let's do this. Soon enough, most if not all chapters agree to hand over some veterans to the Death Watch, including Asgard Warfist from the Space Wolves as the first Watch commander, or Chiron, a dreadnought from the Lamenters, who believes himself to be the last Lamenter. Each fortress has its own watchmaster, which is like a chapter master now, kind of, for each fortress being like a sub-chapter. This is not a Codex compliant chapter. The watch commander was essentially the overseer of all watch fortresses, but it's unknown if there's one currently in position, or if they've gotten rid of the role entirely. The founding members of the Death Watch painted their armor jet black to remember those fallen in the War of the Beast, moving their chapter pauldron to the right shoulder and keeping it visible to not piss off the machine spirit and their armor, while having a special May chapter pauldron for the left arm showing the Ordo Xenos iconography and a bunch of words on it that you can read most of if you look at the uh, official chapter upgrade spurs. The black was, as I said, meant to represent those lost in the War of the Beast, which the numbers were massive, and they formed themselves into small kill teams to specialize in certain jobs. Each kill team is a mix of different kinds of units usually, from the Proteus being Death Watch veterans, having Terminators, Jump Intercessors, and Bikers, to Spectrus being Stealth Phobos operatives, and Indomitor kill teams being Heavy Intercessors with various weapons options. These kill teams are meant to be a Swiss army knife to strike into the weak points in decisive ways. This is my first army. At the beginning of 10th edition and the very end of 8th and 9th, they were great. Now they're the worst army in the game. They did recently get a slight buff to 3 single units. They just got point drops slightly. There's more stories involving involved too, including the kill team Cassius, 
who recently got his solo chaplain model removed from the Space Marines faction and the store too. I love how Death Watch is, but they're the worst faction in the game right now. There's a way to fix this, but I think the best way to go about it would be to return to the 9th edition chapter rules. But this isn't about their rules, this is about their lore. And I've said everything I want to say. By the time this video is out, I'll be at my sister's wedding, so shove off. <laughs>